Today, we're going to be talking about the iOmega Zip Drive. The iOmega Zip Drive is basically a floppy disk drive, but it uses its own proprietary high capacity diskettes, known as zip disks. Over the years, there were various iterations of the Zip Drive. The Zip 100 drive, the Zip 250, and the Zip 750. Each of these drives had their own respective disks. They all came in internal and external variants and all supported SCSI, Parallel, IDE, and in some cases, USB. If you had a lot of Zip 100 disks and you bought a Zip 250 drive, or 750, you could use those Zip 100 disks with that drive, but it would actually be a lot slower to read and write to the Zip 100 disks than it would be on a regular Zip 100 drive. So while later models of Zip drives had backwards compatibility, there was no forwards compatibility with Zip drives that were older. Even though Zip disks boasted a lot better specs than a standard 1.44 meg floppy, floppy disks were still used pretty commonly and were more common than zip drives. So the iOmega zip drive never really took over. Computer manufacturers like Dell, Gateway and Apple in the late 1990s started including zip disks in their machine. And it was also a common upgrade to put a zip disk in your machine as well. When zip drives released, they became very popular very quick. Whether you had a compact computer or a full-size tower, it didn't matter because you could have an internal or external drive. You could almost think of a zip drive as a USB stick from the 1990s. Technology has definitely come a long way since though. From around 1999 to 2003, Sales of zip disks steadily declined. CD-ROMs and CD-writables were becoming much more affordable and zip disks had a higher cost per megabyte compared to them. So people were all about CD-ROMs and they kind of moved on from zip disks. But while they were popular, zip drives were very popular. They were very well selling and everybody had a zip drive virtually. The model of zip drive shown here is a Zip 100 drive, specifically an internal one that uses the IDE interface. So now it's time to demonstrate a zip disk. Just put a zip disk into your zip drive that's hooked into your computer and then it'll start reading automatically. I should also note that the zip drive is soft eject too, unlike a floppy disk which is manual eject. So if you shut down your computer, you can't really get the disk out. There is actually a pinhole on the back for a manual eject, but you have to open the computer to get to it. So just remember to eject your zip disk. In Windows 98, the zip drive detects automatically and is assigned to a removable disk. So there's no need to install any drivers. The zip disk will also open automatically since it's a removable drive on Windows 98. So when you put the disk in your computer, after it's started reading, eventually within Windows 98, the drive will automatically open. just like that. One other thing I forgot to mention, iOmega weren't the only people who made zip disks. Plenty of companies made them. While it was a proprietary technology by iOmega, they licensed the rights to production to other companies to further increase the sales of zip disks. Zip disks were really cool at the time. If you wanted to give your friend a demo of a game you just got or something, you could put it on a zip disk and give it to them the next time you see them. And then they could give you a zip disk with their Christmas of 1998 on it. The point I'm trying to make is that zip disks were very versatile 
since they had 100 megabytes for the user to put whatever they wanted on them. Well, that's about it for today. The iOmega zip disk is something very cool, and I hope you enjoyed this brief history and demonstration video.